everyone! In this video, we are going to go over the importance of layers inside Magma. Layers in digital art are going to be your best friends. Think of layers in digital art as tracing paper in traditional art. You can have sketch on one layer, line art on the other, and color pencil on another without them affecting each other. So let's take a look at the layer palette that's on the bottom right. You can expand this by dragging the middle bar and upward until you can have a little bit more space in the layer palette. On this layer, we will click on this and we can start sketching. So the benefit of having layers is that you can experiment without it affecting each other. You will never have to be afraid of painting and then using the wrong color and completely destroying your bottom layer because you can very simply just start another layer or hide layer and do it again. Let's name this layer sketch by double clicking on it and then type sketch. Now I'm going to start another layer on top of it by clicking on this icon with a plus sign. And I will select back and my sketch layer and lower the opacity that is on this bar to maybe 20. I think 20 is good. This way, you don't see the sketch as prominently as it was before. And then you can select back at layer two. Let's name this one line art. And from here, we can spend tw the next 20 hours cleaning up our lines. Uh, since this is a live demo and I cannot spend that much time, so you just have to give me the credit and pretend that this is a you know, very professionally done line art that um, is very cleaned up, uh, very smooth. L let's just pretend. <laughs> But this is what I usually do. I would have a sketch layer and then I'll have a line art layer. Sometimes I may even have multiple line art layers with foreground, background, and middle ground. Different objects, different parts of the body, just as many as you want. There's nothing wrong with having just one layer, and there is nothing wrong with having 172 layers, as long as you know where to find them, of course. And now I will hide the sketch layer by clicking on the eye icon that is next to it. This will hide the sketch from your view. We are going to start another layer, layer three, and we're going to drag it to the bottom. See how flexible that is? You can drag the layers everywhere. And this one, we're going to name it color. And inside the color layer, we will use a bigger brush. And let's select a skin color. We will color the face and the hair. And see how when I'm using the walk on one pen, I can very easily cover a large area, but still cover small area by just putting light pressure on my pen. It can go into very skinny corner thanks to the pen pressure that is within the pen. This is very relaxing. And hmm, what color of hair can we give it? Maybe a lilac color? They call it lilac. I just call it purple, you know? <laughs> I don't know all the fancy names when it comes to colors. And we will quickly color the hair. And this way, you can easily experiment with colors 
without affecting your line or layer. And because you just drag the layer beneath, the color is going to show up underneath the line art. The next step, we are going to look at color modes. Let's start another layer on top of the color layer that we have. And let's pick a darker color or a blue color. And let's draw on the left side of the face. You may be thinking, oh, what are you doing? But worry not, <laughs> we are going to do something really fun. So now that we have a color that's covering the left side of the face, click on this arrow down icon that is the second to the left. What this does is it's going to lock this layer and everything that is happening within it or confine it within the existing color that is underneath it. So I would do this again. If I release it, you can see all of it. And if I press it, it is going to lock it to the colors that I already have put underneath. So this is very useful when it comes to playing with layer mode because inside layer mode, you have a lot of things that can change how your current layer's color interact with the colors on the bottom. For example, we want this to be shadow and therefore we will click multiply. And look at that, isn't that super cool? We can then go ahead and adjust some parts of it, remove it maybe using the eraser by pressing E and then using B to go back to brush that we were using before. And this way you can very easily add shadow to your layers. You can always change this layer mode to other types to experiment Honestly, I wish I could explain to you how layer modes really work, but in the end, what I always end up being is just toggle them until you like what you see. Because you don't need to know everything there is to know in digital art. You can just have fun and experiment and enjoy the freedom of always being able to change things around. I can also start another layer on top of the shadow layer, do the same thing by confining it down by pressing this arrow. And I'm going to change this layer mode to overlay. I will select a brighter color, maybe a yellow. And then I can do highlights. And you may think, oh, you know, that doesn't look like a yellow color. But that's exactly it. That's how layer modes change the behavior of how colors interact. I can also use soft light to not have such a harsh highlight. Or I can have lighten. It's really fun to experiment and play around with layer modes to see how they work for you. But a general gist of it, if you're really intimidated by the different types of modes, use multiply to add shadow, use overlay or soft light to add lights, use color dodge or glow to add highlights in small areas. But these are not set rules. You can always just change them around and see what happens. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have fun learning and experimenting with layers in digital art. And remember, you can always use these layers when doing collabs with your friends. So have fun with your friends, sketch together, do line art together, and paint together. Thank you for watching.